In this video, we're going to learn how to interpret chromatograms. On any chromatogram, the start line is where we place the samples, widely spaced apart. The start line is drawn in pencil. The pencil is insoluble and does not dissolve in the solvent. The chromatography or filter paper is the stationary phase. This is the phase that does not move. It is stationary. On any chromatogram, the samples must always be labelled. This is so you do not lose track of which sample is which when it has been separated. This blue line represents the highest point the solvent has reached. This is the solvent front. In other words, also known as the highest point the mobile phase has travelled. Now we've identified the key parts of a chromatogram, we can now learn how to interpret these coloured compounds. Chromatography works because the coloured compounds dissolve in the solvent and they move up with the solvent. This coloured compound has finished the highest out of all the other coloured compounds as it is the most soluble in the solvent compared to all of them. This has allowed it to be able to travel the furthest compared to all the other coloured compounds. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. This is due to it having the smallest attraction to the paper as it is the most soluble. The more soluble a solute is in that solvent, the further it can travel with the solvent as it will be less attracted to the paper. These two green compounds finished on the same level. When interpreting chromatograms, if you ever see compounds finishing on the same level, it means they are the same compounds. This is because the same compounds will have the exact same solubility in that particular solvent. These two blue compounds also finish on the same level, so they are also the same compounds. We're now going to zoom out and think about which samples are insoluble, pure or impure. Sample 1 did not move from the start line. This means it is insoluble as the sample did not dissolve in the solvent and so did not rise up with the solvent. Sample 1 contains only one compound as the chromatogram shows how there is one dot above the number 2. This means the sample is pure. A pure substance will always have one compound having risen from the start line. Sample 3 contains two compounds as there are two dots that have risen with the solvent. As there are two different dots, the sample is impure, or it can be described as a mixture, which is two different substances not chemically bonded. Sample 4 contains two different coloured compounds, so is an impure substance. The blue substance has travelled the second furthest distance, so is the second most soluble. The orange substance has travelled the second lowest distance, so is the second least soluble out of all the different substances. Sample 5 contains three different compounds, therefore it is impure. The chromatogram shows how it has the most compounds in the mixture, which is free, whereas the others have two, one, or it is insoluble. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. The RF value can be used to identify unknown substances within a mixture. Once calculated, the number can be compared to the known values of known substances, as these are always the same. The equation to calculate the RF value is the distance moved by the spot or solute divided by the distance moved by the solvent. Using a ruler, you measure the distance moved by the solvent from the solvent front to the start line. For example, here it's going to be 9.2 centimeters. 
and then choose a solute where you will use a ruler to measure the distance moved by the solute from that solute to the start line. For example, here is 7.4 centimeters. We then do 7.4 divided by 9.2, which equals 0 0.8. The RF value is always below one. So if you ever get a number above one, you know automatically that it's wrong. And this RF value is very specific to a compound. It's how we identify the compound in unknown substances. Pause the video here to practice the keywords. The answers will follow. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com for more videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.